Good day, Andrew. Good day, Natalie, Nathan, and whomever else just watching. Today we're going to look at this particular picture. It is by Peter de Hoek. He's Dutch. It was in the 1600s, 1629 to 1688, and it was called The Interior. Okay, We're going to be looking at this picture as we remember certain vocabulary and things that we have studied. First of all, let's remember color. All right, this color is uh, written in a um, English way, but it still says color. All right, here is a color wheel and it has a ton of colors. If you can remember the definition for color or the reason why we have a color wheel, first of all, is to compare colors. All right, and so we're going to be looking at this picture as we compare colors. First of all, let's remind ourselves what the primary colors are. Primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. Secondary colors are violet, green, and orange. All right, we have our warm colors on this side and our cool colors on this side. All right, and so now that we've got that settled, let's look at this picture here and say, is this a warm or a cool color picture? Is it this side here, the yellows, the oranges, and the reds, or this side over here with the blues, the greens, and the purples? If you've looked at this picture and you said, well, it's more of warm colors, you were correct. There are more warm colors in this particular picture. We'll come back to color in a minute. We're going to remind ourselves about lines. Lines come in all sorts of different directions, and this is a good time for you to remember Larry the Line. Go ahead and play that video and then come on back. Larry the Line will help you to understand diagonal, vertical, and horizontal, also curved. But you also have width, whether it's thick or thin, length, whether it's long or short, and then you have whether it's bumpy and smooth or it's fuzzy. All of those things are different parts of lines. Okay. As we look at this particular picture of an interior, do we see lines in this picture? Yes, we see quite a few lines. Let's just start with the diagonal lines. Remember diagonals are those that are on an angle. And there are quite a few. Um, if you look on the um, tile here, there are some angled lines going on here. They almost look straight because they should be straight on the floor, but the perspective makes them angled. We have an angle going on here and here. So there's an angle in her uh, top. There's, so there's angles in many different places. Diagonals is what I mean. Uh, vertical. That would be the straight up and down. Are there? Sure. Here's one here. Down this way over here. Verticals up and down. We have that on the side of her dress in the pattern going on in the tablecloth. In the window, we have the verticals. And so how about horizontal? That would be going across the horizon. This direction. Yes, we do. We have them going on in all of our tiles. The fireplace, the painting. That is not a television set, that is a painting. All right, in this thing that's on the, on the wall, it looks like a map. In the, um, the beams up there. All of those things are lines. All right, so let's go back a second and let's look at another picture. This particular picture is one that was done, and it's not necessarily a picture of a famous artist, but it is a picture that's pretty interesting. These are uh, mannequins that are used to draw, and somebody painted them all sorts of colors. And I wanted to, to use this to look at their colors. So let's bring the color chart back, and let's look and see the primary colors yellow, red, blue. Do we see the mannequins that are those colors? Sure we do. 
There is a yellow, there is a blue. No, wait a minute, that's red. There's a red, a blue, and a yellow. Okay, so how about the secondary colors? All right, that would be violet, orange, and green. Good job. All right, yes, those have all of those colors in it. So now what we're going to be looking at is a couple of words. We're going to be looking at the word sculpture. Okay, now there was no sculpture going on in Peter Van Hoek's painting, um, but we are going to be looking at sculpture, and we're going to start by looking at this particular sculpture here. All right, let's get this in a place where you can see it real good. Move it down, move it down, move it down. You say, well, what is that? Well, I'm going to put, move, pick it up and show it to you. It's a miniature of a table, and you see on there, there's a miniature of a vase. Okay, well, it's actually supposed to be, maybe, looks a little bit like a oriental fishbowl planter. That's what I was thinking, but it could be a vase, too. All right, now why is this a sculpture? It is a sculpture because you can see it from all the angles and up on the top. And I think it looks really, really cool. But it is a miniature. It isn't a small piece of a sculpture. And this is, we don't know how big this dog is, but it's a sculpture too. And if it was not in the picture form, you'd be able to see all the way around. All right, so today what we're going to do is we are going to make sculptures, okay? So let's move some stuff out of the way and get what we're gonna learn, use. We have orange, blue, yellow, green, purple, and red. And this is what you need to get when you are at home need to get yourself a piece of paper black would be awesome then it would look just like mine but any color would work and then you need to try and get yourself one of each of the colors that we have studied the primary colors doo -doo, the secondary colors doo -doo. and that would make it a really nifty 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 sculpture all right so if you cannot get those colors then whatever you have you can be able to use those. Let's move those aside. And then let me show you what I have done. This is the sculpture that I did. Remember that we've been studying Jackson Pollock and I do not have his book right here, but the book is uh, on video and you can go listen to him again. He did a lot of things with lines. And so as you look at this down like this, you can see different lines in this sculpture, but it is a sculpture it's not something flat and we know that because if I turn it sideways you can see that they are bumping up off of the paint off of the paper and if you turn it this way it looks different and this way it looks different and the last way it looks different okay so this sculpture it now has let's see here the primary colors are what red yellow and blue it has yellow and it has the three secondary colors purple, green, and orange. So for you, I will show you how to do this. A flat piece of paper is gonna be very, very difficult and you don't want to put it down there like so. If you put it down there right there, it's flat, it's not a sculpture. We want it to have some form. So we're gonna take this and we are going to bend it, bend it to get some form, okay? But that's how are we gonna be able to get it to stay on the picture? This is nice, but it needs to stay. So it's gonna to have to stay by having feet. So you go ahead and bend this side over here. All right, and then you go all the way down to the other side and you bend it over just a little bit. And you put your sides together like that and bring the feet out. Now you have two feet, okay? What you're gonna do then is get yourself some glue. Elmer's glue will work just good. I had this open earlier. All right, there we go. Elmer's glue works perfect with this. It'll work a little bit better than um, the stick glue. So if you could do that, that's great. Get one of the cheap brushes. This isn't quite a cheap brush, but one of those cheap brushes that, that are in the um, watercolor paints, you can get one of those. 
and just use that to paint some glue on the feet of the piece of paper that you've got going on here. We're not putting it on the tops or over here or anything like that, but on the bottom of the feet, okay? And then we're going to put that on the paper. Now the thing with this is you need to hold it for a little while. So let's count to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. It should stay now, okay? And there it is. We've got ourselves a red one. So we're still missing one color to make all of the primary colors. What would that be? A blue! Yes, we got a blue. So let me do it one more time so you know how to do this, okay? So you can fold over one side just a little bit, not too much, and then go all the way to the other side of the paper. Fold it just a little bit, not too much. And then you bring both of those together so that both of the feet are next to each other. Just like that. Okay. Now this can be, we're going to put glue on here in just a second. You can put this anywhere. You can put it here. You can put one here and one up here. You can go underneath it if you wanted to. And so that it looks like that. You can go next to it to make a tunnel so it looks like that. You can do, put some over here just to make it look more like a square going on over there. You can do whatever you want with this particular paper. I'm not going to glue it on, I don't think, right now. I want to glue it on for the other students in the class on Thursday. But I wanted to show you how you could do that and where you needed to put your glue. Okay? So remember, we're making a sculpture. Every piece has to bump up out of the paper, just like that so that you can see it from every single side. And if you want to be really, really, really creative, go and get your army men or something and put them in, in here and make it a little scene that's going on. And then let me just remind you of a sculpture. is something you can see all the way around. And this would be something that you might see in an exhibit. An exhibit is where you see paintings, pictures, and sculptures. All right, love you, bye.